Welcome to Yates Makes. I've been working on a series of prints combining lino cut with gel plate monoprints. Thought it was a good opportunity to share some techniques that might give you some ideas to spice up either your lino cut work or your gel plate prints. So we'll be looking at how to prepare collagraphs um, to produce your monoprints to use as backgrounds, how to use this um, really cool material I found as a, a kind of stencil mask to keep areas clean so that you can then subsequently move in and lino print areas as well. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, I'm making some pretty big assumptions here that viewers um, that have tuned in have got some experience with preparing a uh, lino cut. Um, if you haven't and you, and you want to have a go and you want some more detailed instruction on this, which I think is you know a whole other video really, let me know. But here's, um, you know, you can let me know in the comments, but there's some quick footage of me preparing my lino stamp. Um, so it's not a complete kind of square or rectangular plate. And it's a stamp because I want to kind of sit it into a background that I've prepared, as I said before, through making a monoprint. Okay, so preparing your monoprinted backgrounds on the gel plate. So I'm starting with some really basic equipment. That's just a Crayola wax crayon. I've got some printer paper. Um, and I've got some drawing paper. This is just normal copier printer paper and I'm using my um, My rubbish bin to just take a kind of rubbing off and um, it's got a great texture it gives me a little dotty pattern um, So basically what you want is just a good range of different things that are going to work different surfaces different papers text um, Textures things that are going to work as a resist on your gel plate um, so here I'm just very loosely rubbing some um, wax crayon onto my drawing paper and um, once you've gotten together a few different pieces of paper texture here I've got some magazine pages with text on which are going to hopefully work as a resist and give me some text as well I'm just now starting to collage them together and um, using a glue stick um, starting somewhere just making a seam making a join doing some overlapping and um, you can worry about composition and how it's all going to fit together later you know the best thing about this technique is you can work fast but you can be very kind of loose and experimental um, just look for changes in direction so obviously i've got text working in two directions there and text of different scales um and you know i know that i'm going to be printing on my um gel plate which is 25 by 20 centimeters which is you know just a little under a4 which is giving me a rough size to aim for so once i'd got a few layers sorted I've now picked up my lino stamp and I'm just using it to try and think well where might it work within this kind of collage composition and um, you know what I do know is that you know anywhere I've got pe uh, bare paper that is going to really clean the paint off the plate in the process so that's going to be quite an empty area almost like negative space anywhere I've got wax crayon texture or text I'm going to get um, a little bit you know more of a transfer and therefore more tone so I am kind of thinking ahead tonally as well so removing a part um, if I left that completely bare as that is now that is going to um, remove no paint off my plate and therefore give me quite a strong color or tone depending on you know what what color I choose to print with so um, you know I think the best way to to start is just knock one of these up get one together quickly get the thing transferred and just see how it looks what textures are working well and um, you know the balance of tones as well you'll notice there I've done a couple of folds oh excuse my dog is having a dream behind me um, so those folds are also going to give me you know hopefully another little linear mark on the plate so um, preparing your gel plate for your transfer you definitely want to 
use a thin layer of acrylic. So um, here I am with my 25 by 20 plate and um, I'm using black Amsterdam acrylic paint and you see that I'm really working it all over the plate and trying to spread it out as evenly as possible. Um, you know, if you've, I've got a piece of paper down on my desk here and which is really useful because if, you, if you've kind of overdone the paint a little bit, um, you can always take some of that excess off. You'll see that little patch of black on the left. Um, that's where I've removed some of the excess. So, um, you know, that's a thin, even layer. Um, I'm dropping down a um, small piece of paper there just to mask off completely an area. And down goes my little collagraph, transfer, collage, whatever we're calling it. And I'm just putting gentle pressure, making sure, you know, naturally you're gonna get some little ridges and wrinkles just for, through the collage process. Um, just make sure it's made pretty good contact. And then you can leave it, you know, 10 seconds or so and peel up. So that's what I'm left with. You can see some of my text is transferred. You can see that some of my, um, texture has transferred and you know all looking good so far i've got an interesting range of different marks different textures and some tonal variation as well so what you've seen me just do there is actually add more paint to the plate and while that paint is wet um i'm just dropping some little droplets of water straight onto that wet paint what I'm then going to do is kind of leave that for probably a minute or two. And as the paint on the plate dries um, around those little droplets, um, it allows me to go in with the tissue and just pick up those areas. Okay, so my plate is kind of ready. And um, I now want to stencil off or mask off the area that I know I'm going to want to go back and print my dead crow kind of lino stamp into at a later date. So I found this stuff, which is fantastic. Now this is called book cover film, and it's like a, a paper backed, slightly adhesive plastic, thin plastic. And um, you can see there that I'm using the paper sides to transfer my shape of my lino stamp on, I'm cutting it out, and then you can peel up that plastic from the paper and that plastic is fantastic for masking off the reason being is if you use a paper mask there's always a risk that the paint you're using to transfer your monoprint with will kind of stick your mask to the paper um, or especially on the edges I've found and then create little rips and tears the plastic um, because it doesn't absorb the paint will not stick and therefore keep everything nice and clean. So all I'm doing now is just placing my little um, plastic stencil down roughly where I think it's going to work compositionally. Just kind of rehearsing the placement for it um, so that I know what I'm doing once I've got my paint down. So I've removed again the little plastic mask and I'm now putting a decent, you know, generous layer of white paint down, um, making sure it's nice and evenly spread out and I can then grab my little plastic mask again and get that positioned having done my rehearsal roughly where I want it and the sticky side or the stickier side of the plastic is kind of facing up which is good because it's going to kind of not shift around too much it's going to adhere to that nice dry paper and um, hopefully give me a nice clean silhouette stencil of where I'm later going to go in and do my lino stamp so yeah bit of pressure all over leave it a few minutes and then you can peel up and you can see that the whole monoprint has transferred um, at the moment the the little mask the stencil is still on the print which is so useful because it allows you a little time to to keep adding to this monoprint if you want to so um, just by way of a demonstration here all I'm doing is rolling out um, a tiny bit of black and I'm just going to add a tiny bit more tone and texture onto the right hand side there and just feeling for the edge of my um, little mask It'd be hard for you to see but it should be clear now where I'm just rolling off the edge of that and you can see how it's protecting that area of my print 
that um, I want to preserve nice and clean. So now um, it's just a matter of peeling up. I've used the edge of my scalpel blade and you can see how cleanly that stencil lifts off. Okay, so once you've done one um, and you're in the swing of the mono printing, you know, I, I would suggest you just crack on. You can reuse that first color graph. You can kind of rip parts off, add parts more on. You can start afresh. You can use it as a kind of like basis to make some more informed judgments about what's going to work texturally or tonally. And here I'm just... Um, made a whole new one this time i've used some watercolor paper so that whole bottom section um, including the lovely texture of like the ring binding kind of rip dotty pattern at the bottom there um you know just be creative look around see what you've got um in your collage drawer or your scrap paper drawer and 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 play you know the best thing about this is it's it's playful there's some uh text in this one there's some uh, as I said, watercolor paper, there's some more wax crayon texture. And um, again, as before, using that little water flick technique and, um, you know, experiment. The best thing about these as well is if, if you feel there's too much on the plate, you can just remove some of it. You can use a wet wipe, you can use masking tape and just clean areas off that you don't want. Um, this time I'm transferring with um, some gel medium. I thought it's probably more sensible than white because it's going to allow me to place my um, little plastic stencil a little bit more precisely in the position I want it. So I'm reusing the same one there. Um, and again, paper goes down, a little bit of pressure. This time I'm using my brayer, not my hand. And, um, you know, leave it five minutes or so, make sure it's nice and dry. You've got no fears about your mask sticking to your paper because of it being plastic, as I said before. This time I got left really luckily with a, a nice little residue um, on the plate that's going to give me a kind of second print as well. And again, peeling up with my knife and you'll find that, again, you get a nice clean silhouetted area. Um, so, um, you know, you might get lucky, like I've done there, and I've got kind of an interesting kind of silhouette texture of, of the bird left on the plate. Um, so I'll transfer that as well and come back to it later. Um, I could do a little lino print kind of alongside it, so you get a kind of double image sort of thing. So again, lifting that off with some uh, gel medium. And it's back to the start again, you know. Um, reuse the collagraph or the little you know collage transfer sheet that you, you've just prepared add to it reduce it um, and you can just keep pulling off print after print after print and what I've really enjoyed about this is you know sometimes with lino printing it can I find it a little bit kind of that final stage once you've done all your carving and then you're printing you to do a proper edition you're you're trying to get pretty much an exact or as close as you can replica each time and to get your edition done and what I like about this process is once I'm onto the lino stage as I'm just preparing here is you know I'm printing into a, a slightly different background each time and you know printing a series um, which although linked and, and come from a common starting point have all got their own individual personality which I find keeps my interest um, a little bit more um, I'll include this footage at the end here. This is just, you know, me inking up um, with um, uh, Caligo Safe Wash um, uh, block printing ink, um, which is water-based, fantastic product. Um, I'll link it in the, the description below. And um, the only kind of drawback of working this way is um, you have to really carefully position by hand and try and avoid getting kind of inky fingertips into your background it's a bit kind of surgical it's a bit kind of um delicate but it is quite forgiving you know I've, I've slightly oversized that silhouette that mask i made in plastic to give me a good area to aim for and you know in parts i get a nice little white border as well and then it's just a matter of of enjoying the the lino printing process using my kind of hand burnishing, using my brayer, using my wooden spoon, um, peeling up, having a little peek to see if I've got a successful transfer. And just as I said before, um, you know, I've, I've now built up a range of like 15 or so really quite 
varied monoprints you know this one has got far more kind of open and negative space in that top right hand corner so it allows me to see how the bird's head looks against a slightly more open area give me a little bit more high contrast you know I, I find this way of working visually a lot more stimulating than just printing you know a longer edition um, with with lino printing so again this is um, another one and yeah just like with the mono print inside of it you can just get into the swing of things and enjoy the process um so there you go um these prints will all be on um my website i'll put the web address up there now which has got my shop on it and if you're interested you can go and have a look um hopefully it's given you some ideas and sparked a bit of interest if you're a gel plate printer it might encourage you to branch out try some little lino stamps if you're a, a lino cut artist it might encourage you to think a bit more creatively about how you can mix mono printing in with your normal lino cut processes okay this one i've used a cardboard what have i used here like a net for some packaging again makes a fantastic little kind of chronograph stamp on your gel plate all right um if you've enjoyed the video um consider subscribing um comment like all of that kind of supports the channel increases the chance of it kicking in to an algorithm somewhere on youtube and getting pumped to a few more feeds around the world and i'll look forward to seeing you soon in another video ta-ta